back for more about the heat equation. This was the heat equation in one space dimension and of course a time dimension. And so that was modeling heat flow along a rod. What if we had a hot plate? So two space dimensions. Um, and so we have something like this. We have some hot plate, and um, it's maybe maybe you turned on the burner, and it got really hot in here, and it kind of got medium over here, and it's cool over here, and then maybe you turned off the heat source, and you want to know how the how the heat spreads out. So maybe the if you look at the graph of this thing, it looks like um, it's got a hump here, it's kind of medium over here, and tails off, and then it's actually rather cool over here. And we want to know if that's the t equals zero snapshot, what happens when t greater than zero? We'd expect this hot spot to cool down and the cool spot to get a little warmer as that heat flows into it. It's going to depend on the boundary conditions, of course, whether we're keeping the edges in an ice bath or insulating them or putting them in boiling water or whatever. But we want to know it, at the least what is the partial differential equation that governs this, an analogy to this one, derivative in t, is proportional to the second derivative in x. Well, once again, I'm going to do a very hand-wavy derivation. Um, I'm going to look at some examples, and they're going to be some of our favorite examples, the quadrics. So one is, let's say, u, so we've got u of now of x, y, and t. And let's say, oh yeah, let's say that at time zero, let's say it's bowl. And so that's cold in the middle and hot out here at the edges. If you want the contour plot, it looks, of course, like this. And it's hot out here and cold in the middle. And I'd like to know what happens in the future to that. Well, the cold spot should get hotter, and the hot spots, well, I don't know what the hot spots should do. It kind of depends on what the edge is. But that cold seems like it should get um, get hotter. And so let's look at the, the second partials with respect to space here. Uxx is 2, easy calculation. Uiy is 2. The mixed partial happens to be 0. And remember that these guys measure the concavity. And both of those are indicating that in the x direction and the y direction that it's concave up. And that's suggesting that we're at we're at a minimum. Now that's that we'll we'll learn more of that story later, but it's definitely suggesting that we've got some curvature upward here, very much like one of the cases we had in the one dimensional case. And so we notice that um certainly our intuition tells us that u t is gonna be greater than zero here. So let's just note that for a second. Now, if I flip the whole thing upside down, I'm not going to have to draw that. If I just flip it upside down, and if I had it being more like a max and a concave down, this is the upside down version, then that would be something like a maximum, and that should be getting colder. So these positive numbers are linked to a positive ut. These negative numbers are linked to a negative ut. That's that's uh, suggestive. It's much. It's going to be much more of a clincher if we look at the saddles. So let's look at u of x y zero equals x squared minus y squared. That's one of the standard saddles. And I'm going to look at the contour map. It's a lot easier to look at this with contour maps as usual. And x squared minus y squared the contour, the zero contour is like this. I don't need to dot that in. And here's one, and here's minus one. And so, let me draw that a little bigger. So it's cold here, cold here, hot here, hot here, and medium along the axes. And let's think, just let's just think about um, the points here, whether they should be getting colder or hotter. Well, 
if I look at this point right at the center, there's some cold stuff right next to it, but there's an equal amount of hot stuff next to it. So that hot stuff, the heat, if I draw the heat flow as some arrows, let's say red arrows, the heat flow is going to go in here, but it's going to equally go out here. And let's think about like a point over, so that seems like it's maybe going to cancel and not change at all because of the symmetry of the thing. What if I look at a point right here? There, I've got um, some hot stuff. It's hot over here, it's medium here, it's cold. The heat's definitely going to flow across. But is, there, is that a point where I've got an excess of heat or uh, a deficit of heat? Not really. If you think about the saddle surface, I'm not going to try and sketch it right now, but if you think about how the saddle surface works in the three-dimensional graph, there's no bumps where there's an obvious excess of heat, and there's no dips where there's an obvious minimum of heat where it would want to get hotter. So in fact, it, it's not a proof at all, but in fact, this guy is exactly a steady state situation. It's a very much more interesting analog uh, of that steady state temperature profile of the rod, the straight line. It's not a straight line, it's not a plane, a flat plane, but in fact it turns out, when you analyze it carefully, to be something where the temperatures are all going to stay constant as time goes on. Now let's analyze, let's remember what our three partials were here. They were equal to um, plus two, minus two, and zero. Interesting. Now the third example, let me see if I can fit it in here because I'm running out of paper and sort of time, is the other saddle, 2xy. Well, we know exactly what's going to happen with that if we believe what we, we know what happens with this. Um, it's just this rotated by 45 degrees. And so it should still have, it should still be a steady state for temperature. Again, if, if you're not tr trusting that too much, that's, that's okay to be skeptical of that. It turns out to be true. But um, you'll have to take that on faith a little bit in this presentation. And let's look at the partials. These are both 0, and this one is 2. So this is suggesting that the mixed partial is not leading to any change in time. So there shouldn't be a link between the time derivative and the mixed partial. But the sum of these two numbers, here it's 0 and here it's 0, that's linked to the ut is 0. And in the previous two examples for the, the x squared plus y squared and the upside down version, we got a link between the sum of these guys and ut. And indeed, that's what we get as the answer. It turns out that the heat equation, I need a sheet of paper here, in two dimensions, I use a lot of paper doing this, there we go. I knew I had some more. Is ut is some constant times what's called the Laplacian, sometimes written a del squared or nabla squared u. And so that's the heat equation in two dimensions and one, one two space dimensions and one time dimension. Any point in the surface, you calculate this Laplacian which kind of gives you, and this, is, this tells you exactly how to interpret now. It's, if that U represents the temperature, it's, is this sort of a place where there's excess temperature that needs to be dissipated? Or there is, is, there, is there some uh, a deficit of, of, of heat and temperature at that point that needs to be filled in? It's exactly a great interpretation of that. Let me give you a corollary of that. And we've seen two, two examples of it already. I mentioned in class Laplace's equation was when you just have that Laplacian equal to zero. And that models a function that can be thought of as a steady state temperature distribution. Something that won't change in time, just like the saddles, which are not obviously steady state, but they turn out to be very cool steady state temperature distribution. Somewhere where there's no humps and bumps, there's some cool ripples and saddly stuff, but nothing where the temperature is accumulating or um, in a deficit at any point.